Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be doing a follow-up to what's called a piggyback grafting. And what a piggyback graft is where you've got two root systems working together and supporting one scion or one selected um, flavor of the desired um, plant you want to make. And this is um, a follow-up to what's called the bear's lime, also known as the Persian lime, um, and also the Tahitian lime. They're all this, you know, another also known as name. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, take a look at what the bear's lime has accomplished since we last grafted it um, about six months ago. Um, if you want to come in and, and zoom in a little closer, you can see what I'm talking about by coming in a little bit closer here. You can see here that we've got the trunk. We're going to remove this sucker out, but the lime is this root over here, and it has been grafted onto. We're going to remove this sucker. It has been grafted onto this, what we call the unknown citrus rootstock, which is back here. So the unknown citrus rootstock's at the bottom, which is this larger tree trunk that is now putting all of its energy and resources into the grafted scion wood. We're gonna to have to remove this sucker so that all the energy goes towards the desired flavor of the bear's lime and not into this unknown citrus variety rootstock. Before we go into any further detail about this plant, I wanna take you back in time to about six months ago when we accomplished this um, piggyback graft so you can see the steps on what it takes to accomplish um, this result. So check this out. I'm just going to put it right in the right in the hole that we've made. So we're going to set that down. First position this graft where we think it's going to heal. So we're going to put these two branches in contact like so. And I, all I'm going to do here is open the bark like so. so we're coming in with the knife and we're just cutting into the tree and we're going to do another cut to basically fit the lime within it so that's now open and cut that some more and some more and again so now what we're going to do is take the branch And we're gonna to try to fit that right in there as well. Let me see if I can get out of the shade so you can see where that's gonna fit right in there. I'm gonna to try to make this a little bit deeper, a little bit larger. Here's that. And that. Let me get that out of there. And then we're now just gonna open the bark off the line. So we're just gonna shave up and what's gonna be a V shape to basically fit right into that same position. And all of that cambium tissue that's right under the bark, I'm gonna try to get out of the sun so you can see that, that's gonna fit right in there. We're doing it on both sides to basically fit right in there. And as long as some of those cells come into contact, they'll actually start healing. And as so here I am now with my string. You can actually do this with um, twine as I'm doing here today. Another method I've seen other people use successfully is using something like this. Some black electrical tape could work as well. But I'm going to do this so you can actually see the progress. So we're just going to go like so. We're gonna fit the two wounds together and then just wrap it as tight as you possibly can. The two will agree to grow to grow together as one. And, and that concludes it. The so welcome back. You can see that since we started with the graft, it's since grown almost twice as large. But why did we do what we did? Why the piggyback graft and what's the benefits? Come in a little closer and let me see if I can explain this to you. Come here. If you take a look over here, the bear's lime, which is over here, was grafted at this union right here, which is not so easily noticeable, but in this area it was grafted onto a dwarf rootstock. 
Our intentions was to gain the vigor and the size off of this rootstock, which is a standard um, mystery fruit rootstock. As you can see, and what we're gonna do immediately right now, is I'm gonna remove these sucker branches, which are coming off the mystery rootstock. I believe this was a seed, um, a seedling rootstock. You can see that it's got these you know, sharp thorns um, in here as well. But what we're gonna do is remove the suckers so that the energy from the rootstock is all forced into the desired flavor of the bear's lime tree. And on the back side as well, you can see that there's this branch over here. And if you come around um, behind me, you can take a look at exactly what I'm pruning. I don't wanna just do it without you guys seeing why. So you can see here that this here is another sucker that's coming out of, out of this rootstock and not and this here is the scion wood. So again, we're gonna go with our pruners. We're gonna cut as close as we can to the sucker and then prune it. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go over it with the ivory organics. You can see that we did a layer with the ivory organics about you know six to eight months ago. A lot of it is still there. It was a very rainy season, so a lot of the mud and the dirt from the soil has since washed back on it. So we're gonna clean that off and we're gonna do another coat in just a moment. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the bandage on the plant and take a look at how the two trees have since calloused together. Let's check that out. So now that we've taken the bandage off, come around the side and let's take a look at how the two plants have since healed. If you come around this side, take a look in here. Let me just take off the rest of the string and you can see how the two plants have since healed over. The cambium tissues from the rootstock have since merged and become one with the cambium tissues of the bears line and now all of the energy from the rootstock is going to fuel the rest of this plant converting what was once a dwarf lime tree into what will eventually grow into a standard 15 to 20 foot tall bears lime tree right in this zone. What we're going to do next and what I want to share with you is a couple of other issues. The first one being if you take a look at these pruned branches if you come back now around you'll see that we had a very large branch in this area. Let me remove this weed out of the way. But we had, we had a large branch in this area that was pruned and another large branch, which was the primary branch on the top. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna now seal it with a product such as this over here. And what we have is, it's called Ivory Organic. It's a three-in-one plant guard where you just add water, protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product and it's registered material for use in organic agriculture as well. What we're gonna do is we're going to open the contents here. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna open the product like so. The container comes with the um, powder, which is the organic brush-on formula, and then it also comes with this oil vial which is bubble wrapped. And the oil vial consists of the following oils. If you zoom in here, you can see that it's got organic castor oil and cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil. And these oils will pretty much function for the purposes of, again, the castor oil is a known um, oil for repelling rodents. The rest of them, um, such as the cinnamon, clove, cedarwood, garlic, peppermint, and rosemary are effective repellents to insects. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add the paint powder to the can. The instructions say to add water halfway, begin stirring. And then adding the oil content so that the oil doesn't clump up in just one spot with the powder. 
and you can see that's what it looks like so far. And then we're just gonna add water to the rest of the can. And now we've got a full a pint size whitewash solution that is organically formulated to keep the plant cool and also offer defenses against predominantly insects from entering those exposed um, wounds. And as you can see, this is all real time. I haven't, I haven't cut any of this out. You can see in less than a minute, we've now got a formula that has the consistency of a, you know, 50-50 latex white paint with water. But again, this is all organic and not chemically based. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply this to the plant. Follow me. So what we'll do now is we'll just go with our brush and we're gonna seal those pruned branches. And we'll also seal the second main branch. We can coat the entire trunk. As you can see, this is all exposed to a lot of light. This pruned branch, which was one of the suckers, we can seal that as well. And again, all of these pruned branches are potential entryways for Aside from just pathogens, also wood boring insects such as the termites and the beetles. And we're just gonna brush that along like so. And then if you can come around to the other side, let's now also coat the grafted area as well. And the goal here again is this is similar, is to make sure that there's no um, pests laying eggs within those cracks between the graft union. We wanna make sure that's all Taken care of. And again, we're going to coat the entire branch to keep the plant nice and cool. So instead of having to repair damaged trunk tissues, it can focus on health and growth. You can see how easy that was. The product also comes in colors brown and green. So if you have a preference of doing something more natural, that's also available. And now let me just um, share one other um, point with you. Stop it. And also, another benefit of the piggyback graft is that your success rate is near 100%. You've got two plants on their own rootstock growing together and putting their energy together to result in one beneficial desired flavored plant. And again, our goal with this experiment is to basically convert this, what was originally a grafted onto dwarf rootstock um, bears lime tree and put it on the power of a standard rootstock so that it can ultimately reach heights of 15 to 20 plus feet. So the benefit of this method is again we're taking what was originally a dwarf bears lime tree and it's now going to grow into what will soon become a standard bears lime tree. So the last thing I want to share with you is this ready to use ivory organic spray and let me share um, the benefit of this product over here. If you take a look it's called Ivory Organics. It's a three-in-one plant guard where you spray on trunk, branches, and leaves, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. Just like the can label, this one here is ideal for newly installed plants and trees. Um, Non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And the and here, I'll just read this with you real quick. It says, protect newly installed plants and trees that are especially susceptible to ex um, excess sunlight and damage caused by insects. Cut all um, exposed leaves, branches, and trunks to prevent sun stress and sunburn, especially at times of extreme heat. So the goal here is, one, to help keep the plant cooler, we can just shake this product and spray it on the leaves. But before I do, there's one other thing I want to share with you. If you come in a little closer again, um, there are some leaves that I saw that were attacked by some insects. If you take a look in here, you can see like, for example, there's you know some damaged leaves over here. Um, there was some more, I guess it was over here. If you take a look, this was part of the sucker um, branch that was from behind it. But you can see that this was damage caused. This is also a citrus leaf, so it could have just as easily got the line, but it, instead of went for the sucker part. Um, but this here is typically caused by either grasshoppers or it could be, um, caterpillars among other um, insects that are chewing on leaves. So to protect this damage from happening to your plant, you can just simply take the Ivory Organics and just spray it on your leaves like so. And you can see what we've created. If you zoom in here, you can actually see that some of these leaves, especially the darker green leaves, you can see are coated
with the Ivory Organic Spray. You can see that it's now got a lighter film on the leaf, and you can take a look at that, like that. And so on those days that are, you know, up in the 90s and, and hundreds, your plant will now be several degrees cooler with the application of the spray. And you only have to do this one time on those leaves. As the plant continues to grow, you can continue to protect it. But I've seen some leaves that were um, used as a foliar spray in the summer that still had it on in the winter. Um, but for those newer leaves, this is a great way to keep your plant nice and cool. If you found this video informative and educational, be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all these other Ivory Organics videos. Thanks again for watching and happy garden.